Hello everybody, welcome to Reiki 1 class organizational things. Uh, let's make every hour, let's make a bathroom break for like five minutes. I will do first two hours and Jim will do the second two hours. Uh, uh, the structure of the class is we have uh, Reiki goes in uh, four levels. Traditionally Usui Reiki. Uh, the traditional classical Reiki which is spread over the West. Everybody calls just Reiki. It is four levels. Level one uh, introduces you to Reiki, makes you a healer. So you graduate from level one, you're already a healer. And you can practice on your friends, you know, whoever volunteers to be treated, but you're not supposed to charge money. You can accept donations, but you're not supposed to charge money. And level two basically gives you the right uh, to charge money and explains how Reiki practitioners uh, do their business. So it's more like business introduction. And also you get cup, you get additional symbols. In level one you get a symbol, in level two you get additional symbols. Level three is for practitioners who kind of practiced and then after you got the first experience with people, uh, level three allows you, gives you additional symbol and explains all the details about you know all varieties of Reiki, all varieties of how you can do it. Basically, expand to uh, you know maximum what what can be trained in, in standard course. And level four is is teaching. So now, in addition to doing things, you will be taught how to teach others. And that's very simple. Simple. It's very simplified. Um, you know, for massage course, do you know how long does it take? You know, hundreds, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, right? For massage. Me. Yeah. Um, I have six twenty-five. Six. And I still practice. Um, six, for six, California, you need two fifty. For California, you need two hundred fifty hours. For Reiki, uh, level one is eight hours. Level two is, I think, eight hours. Level three is eight hours. Level four is eight hours, plus minus a little bit. So it's it's a uh, order of magnitude less. Um, it's very simplified, and the reason it is simplified is uh, we work with the spirit. So in the Reiki, you just I introduce to the spirit, and then the spirit does the rest of the work, and it works wonderfully. In the first class, we taught um, just the introduction to the spirit was sufficient. People picked up from there. Basically, there is a lot of intelligence on the side, so people are basically being helped. They're being guided to the class, and then they're being guided after the class. So we just do that initiation. It's the whole class of initiation, and that's and that's about it. Uh -huh. I wanted to say that um, my portion of the class, the second half, I'm going to use David as a guinea pig to show the hand positions and things of this nature so you could practice for a week and uh, then when we come back the second week for the second four hours you'll at least have some ideas of uh, have some practice and know what you're doing a little bit with the hand positions. Thank you, absolutely. And David, I would like to interview you when I have a chance later. Absolutely, I would love that. Wonderful, thank you. I actually only live a few hours from you. Ah, okay, so that, that helps. All right. Um, today we do four hours, and uh, next week, Sunday, we do another four hours. If you can't make it next Sunday, we'll have to watch the recording, I guess. And I think we'll repeat the same class 
again soon uh, same class so um, you know all students from from the first class are welcome to join for free the second class all right um, also if you miss the attunement we'll have to give you a you can get a personal attunement if you are not able to get it from the first class or you had to miss a class so if you let me know or let Max know we can get together and do attunement for you you don't have to be here next week to get that attunement but we'd like to uh, make sure you get it yes absolutely yeah I did a couple of attunements of, of you know between the classes and it's fun and so did I. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing attunements all the time. Some for Reiki and some for other things. Yeah, by the way, the other things. The class is called Galactic Reiki. And we give you two electronic certificates. One for Usui Reiki, which is classical. And Galactic Reiki is something which we add. Basically, it is based on what we learn from our aliens. You know, it was fun when Jim started channeling aliens. He started channeling their... Reiki too. When you say I, you know, when you, when I complain to the aliens and something hurts, they say, "How about we do some Reiki on you?" And this way we, we, um, we started learning uh, alien Reiki as a patient. I learned Usui Reiki as a patient and alien Reiki as a patient, and it's fun. So we will hmm. share the basics of alien Reiki with you. And when I say alien, it's more like transdimensional high-dimensional, shamanic, mystical, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff. Reiki is universal. It's, um, it's just an energy healing art. There is lots of different forms of energy healing art, and Reiki is the most simplified, the most modernized, the easiest to pass over. So the first thing you just realize that you are a healer, and that's it. Just realization that you are a healer is, is, uh, I would say, the most profound. Um, I will possibly run a little, um, just say a couple of words about yourself. I just wonder what level of healing you are. Are you already practicing healing? Are you a healer? And um, and and that's it. I, I you know we have so many people. If we do introductions full way, it would take an hour. So you seem to be already knowledgeable about chakras. You are a healer, right? Uh, no, I'm a beginner with healing, but I have I have I have studied. I've been studying it. Now I'm. What 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 modality do you do? Uh, well, it it is Reiki. Okay, but. wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess the question is not are you a healer? The answer to are you a healer? Everyone is a healer, right? Oh, okay. If you survived. To this age, you're already a healer. You healed yourself, right? <laughs> right, right? So the question is, are you already in healing arts? Yes. Uh -huh. what, what, what do you do? Uh, massage therapy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I actually work with um, Archangel Michael. Uh -huh. Or sorry, Archangel Raphael on um, healing. So I do hands-on healing. Um, but my guides have just been teaching me. So <laughs> I haven't been formally trained but um, yeah my guides have all right all when, right. Do you when you speak, you speak, what's your what's healing, your healing um, I've actually been instinctively uh, doing the healing the hand healing just through my spirit guides um, once I began speaking the galactic languages um, I feel like I've just instinctively started using the languages along with my hand um, you know along with the the hand energy so mm -hmm. it's really the same thing. I've just been doing it instinctively with my guides, and because I've been doing it on the colonies, I just feel like I just kind of know what to do when I'm here. And I worked mm -hmm. on my husband's knee last night. He's having a knee issue, so I was excited. I told him after my class today, I want to I want to work on him again because he's having a hard time. And he said it helped him a lot last night. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Jim, if you're there, you can uh, share your um, um, healing. How long have you been a healer? I don't know. Jim, possibly. Yeah. No, I'm here. Uh, uh -huh. I've been a healer now since 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I started just by going to Reiki classes 
to get healings for myself because I uh, we're readjusting the 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 thing for the bed here. But um, I went to Reiki after I lost my job just to get calm and pacified after I lost my job and realized that as I was uh, being healed I could feel the energy of other people and I, even with my eyes closed I could tell that their energies were where they were in the room. So um, discovered a couple months later when I started to actually want to help them do some Reiki healing that I was a natural Reiki healer and had been a shaman in many lifetimes. So um, one of the ladies did some readings and was like, whoa, okay. So um, so that's how I started my Reiki healing. I, I just was, uh, I loved doing it, and it was, the energy flowed really well, and people were really helped, and I, I feel very blessed about that. Who was your first teacher uh, in this Robin, lifetime? Robin Welsh. Robin and Welsh then, was my first teacher, yes. Oh, Robin, yes. How is she? Um, she's doing better. She did uh -huh. have a lot of health issues uh, after Reiki. After I did Reiki 2 with her, she ended up in the hospital because mm -hmm. she had uh, many uh, other issues that... Uh, <laughs> But nobody, she never asked for any healing, so we went to the hospital and helped her heal there. So, so you must a teacher. She's one that uh, uh, taught me Reiki one and Reiki two, uh, and then Barbara Carlton taught taught me Reiki three and Reiki four. So, yeah, actually, Robin taught me too. My my first initiation was with Robin, but uh, it was unofficial. It was just during Reiki share. And then, uh, and then later, officially, I did with Barbara. And Jim joined Barbara on, for level three and four. Actually, you were in my remotely in my class for Reiki four. You were on the right. phone. Right, <laughs> right. So, so level four we did together. Yes, level four um, we did together. So Jim mentioned one thing, which is, mm, you know, Reiki. Even Reiki masters, advanced Reiki healers, they still go through through sicknesses. Yes. So even though you are doing miracles, you know some karmic thing or some things that you attract uh, get to you, but it's completely on different level. It's just you take the sickness differently, you resolve it differently, and even if you ch if you choose to go leave that plane, it's still quite different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you guys brought that up because I was just going to ask you if you could touch just a second about self-healing and performing self-reiki and, you know, in general, do you guys do it on yourself and, and do you find it effective or is it better to find another reiki healer to help you when you know and identify it um, in yourself and do you also think that there's a need to, do you think we're absorbing people's energy un, un, unknowingly? Lots of questions, but yes. Um, let me. Is it all right if I take this one, Max? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, first of all, yes, you can do Reiki healing on yourself. It's a. It you can do it because energy is energy, and you can get energy from the universe to help you to uh, become a circuit for that energy in your body. Um, it's. I find it harder to heal myself because when you're healing somebody else, you're using their energy also. And when you're healing yourself, you're using your energy and energy out. Yeah, time. that's how it feels. It's almost like you're almost, <laughs> you don't so, have enough energy. To... <laughs> so it feels so it... like you're, um, you're not getting as much energy, but you're still getting a lot of energy. Even It's your belief system that has to be ramped up when you're healing yourself. You have to believe that that energy is coming and working on you because you can't really feel it on yourself as much as you can feel it on other people. At least I find it in my case. Now the other thing is is yes sometimes you are taking on other people's energies and there are some uh, galactic things that you can do to stop that and also when you break off from having a Reiki session you always say the bond between me and thee is broken 
so that that energy can stop flowing at that time in both directions because as you are healing someone you are also being healed by the energies that are coming down through you and out of you and so this can also cause energies to come back up through as well energy is flowing it's just going and so if they have something that is an illness of, of some nature you can shut that off at the end by saying the bond between me and thee is broken for now now there's another galactic Reiki thing called the Rook, which um, stops energy from coming out of them to you. And we'll learn that later. Uh, well, Reiki One doesn't teach that, but if if uh, I think that it should be a Reiki One teaching because it's important. So it it is. Uh, I'll show you that later. We'll put it that way. And this I stops stop. any, any, any energy from coming back to you. So if you feel like there's negative energy on that person or that they have a lot of negativity, you can actually block it off right away and still be able to give them the energy. It'll just be one way. It won't flow back. Yay. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. And now, thank you. Wonderful. And now I welcome you as a healer. Alayana Nialana Hayana Yana Lau Ralana 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 Yahu Rana Maina Yahu Raina Ularana Nu Larana Yana ho Haya Yana haya hama Yana ham Yana haya Yanna 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 Are you a healer? Welcome a healer in yourself. Healing is a miracle. Maybe the only miracle which, which is permitted always. It's a miracle which you can carry with you and exercise at any moment. Many of you, all of you wanted the proof of the miracle the proof of the spirit, proof of the God. And here you got it with your fingertips, with your palms. You can turn it on any time to experience the spirit in action right away, whenever you need on demand, spirit on demand. Reiki is 
miracle on demand, spirit on demand. Welcome it, allow yourself into it, bathe in it, immerse in it, be it. Reiki welcomes you as you welcome it. It is love materialized, love manifested, love, the essence of love manifested in you. Welcome. If you don't want to speak, just mute yourself, please. Um, all right, the history of Reiki is wonderful. Uh, many cultures, all cultures have shamanic healers, energy healers. If you look at Christian paintings, in most cases there are uh, healers placing hands on people or just preaching. And when you see talented masters, the positions of hands are positions of sending energy through from hands. It's not like usually not like that. It is like that. It is sending the energy either to the crowd or connecting to the sky or connecting to the earth or connecting to the water, connecting to the trees. It's always energy connection. So, you know, in all times and in the times of, um, I would say, when the oil paintings were, were made with, with uh, Christian saints, you can see the saints being, being energy healers. <clears throat> um, the most, uh, I would say, it, sophisticated ways of uh, energy healing are in the East, in China, in India. And in India it would be yoga, in China it would be Qigong and related arts. Qigong and related arts. Um, uh, tai Chi is also a, <clears throat> an energy, self-energy healing art. And not surprising, it came with uh, uh, came to the Japan, and there there is Qigong art in secret schools. Uh, most of these arts are in secret schools. Usually, the mainstream um, the mainstream is repressing the energy healing arts for so for many 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 centuries. Uh, energy healing arts were in secret schools; they weren't public. Uh, there were sh medicine woman, women, uh, shamans, but it wasn't a part of <clears throat> establishment, usually, in most cases. <clears throat> it was sort of kept secret. And it was secret in Japan as well. There were like secret schools or closed schools. And um, it kind of decayed in Japan to a certain extent in a way that you taught, but you, it wasn't efficient and it wasn't making people much healthier. And uh, the founder of Reiki was, in that crisis, he was a, a Qigong practitioner, but he couldn't really help himself and other people and members of his family. So he, he prayed, he had a crisis, he prayed, he went to the fast for many days in a, on a mountain, and he was given that Reiki art and he didn't even know that he had it until he hurt himself and placed his hand on the wound and it healed. And then he discovered that art in himself. And for a while he was healing his family and friends until, and his name is Makao Yusui, Usui. Mikao, Mikao Usui. You will get the electronic, wonderful electronic textbook so you, you will read. That would be part of the homework. Um, <clears throat> And um, and then he started teaching it to others, and uh, his student made it into a school. Basically, Mikao was a healer who discovered it, taught it, and then somebody else, the student, made it into a system which can be transferred from one teacher to another. And then it was still closed, closed school, and it was expensive closed school. Um, and then the war happened, and by the end of the war, uh, 1945, Japan was an, on the verge of destruction, and the Reiki uh, keepers of that tradition um, realized it has to be salvaged, 
if Japan is destroyed, that art has to be saved. So they <clears throat> sent a, one of the teachers, a woman, uh, Madame Takata, to uh, was it island? I don't remember the island. The closest to Japan. American island closest to Japan. I'm sorry. You know the joke. Hawaii, yeah. Hawaii, Takata, yeah. To Hawaii. Um, and and then she started teaching it to Westerners. And then her students figured out that you know the price can be lowered and it can be made into their inexpensive art. And then when this happened, first invention or discovery of it basically receiving the gift second learning how to teach others how to transfer the gift next how to release it to the West and last how to make it inexpensive then it it, it basically became most most known um, most popular art of energy healing of others yoga would be even more popular but it's energy healing of yourself and Reiki is energy healing of others. The difference between yoga and Reiki is very superficial. It's the same thing. What is called um, prana is almost the same thing as uh, Reiki energy. And it's not physical, it is the spirit. As a researcher, I, I know for sure it's not something which is measured by the devices. It is not electricity, not electromagnetics, not sound. It is vibration, but not measured by modern traditional devices. It's something related to the level which is beyond physicality, beyond the matter. It's very close to the matter, but it's beyond. Now, how does it feel? Usually my exercise, and that's how I was taught, is kind of warm up your palms, keep breathing and breathe intentionally like nicely and then build a, a ball of energy between your palms and kind of inflate it with energy and as you breathe when you breathe in you take the energy from the universe and as you breathe out inflate it with that ball with golden healing energy and start feeling it flowing between your hands and if you feel wonderful if you don't feel you just need to get to that zone now or later. Don't worry if it doesn't come right away, but hopefully it does. And then what I do, I test that energy by sending it from my right hand to the left. And I just keep a little distance and I move my hand and intend to send it from right hand to the left. I don't know if it works the other way, but if you're left-handed, maybe it would be just symmetrical. And then I start feeling it. I start feeling that maybe it's electrical, kind of electrical feeling, a little of kind of charge moving across the hand, but it, you can see the movement. It's little buzz. It reminds me like if you blow gently on your hand, that would be the same feeling. And what is funny, when I do healing at the air and there is wind around, I can't feel Reiki as, as, as easily. I do feel it, but it's kind of the wind interferes. So the feeling is very gentle. It's like a uh, gentle wind. And then if you move it away, it's you. I, I keep still feeling it. I feel that movement even if it's from the distance. And that's one of the properties of Reiki. It moves through the distance. It moves through the clothing, which electromagnetic energy usually doesn't. It moves even through water. It moves through the walls. And I have experienced distant Reiki as well. It's somewhat different, but it also works. And when you're done practicing, you can place the fingers on your heart and send the Reiki there. Right. And you should give another chant, right? Send the energy to your heart. That would be the main exercise. Uh, typical Reiki meditation is breathe in the energy of the universe. And when you breathe out, inflate the healing golden ball of energy in your heart. That's simple. And it is self-healing. That's what you that's what you do for self-healing. Allah <laughs> 
Alayna, Alayna. Alayna, Alayna. Alayna, Alayna. Alayna, Alayna. Alayna, Alayna. Do you want to do another chant? Are you sure? Yanna haya hama Yanna haya Yanna haya hama Yanna haya Thanks, Alison. So chanting is not part of traditional Reiki. Um, usually you do Reiki silently. And for me it took some effort to disconnect my focus on my hands to focus on my chanting and now I can do Reiki and chant at the same time. It came naturally, I just remembered it. But um, so if you don't if you feel that when you talk or chant Reiki stops in your hands, you know, it's okay, you just kind of have to alternate or don't chant. But chanting is part of galactic healing, it's part of shamanic healing. And uh, talking talking to the patient is part of the part of the Reiki healing. Usually um, psychic reading and psychic consultation and guidance, uh, health guidance is as important or even more important than what, than what you do with the hands. So it's, um, it's not required but it is a, a great um, assistance because usually any pain is resulting from fear. So you do a little bit of psychoanalysis, you treat that pain but also you treat that underground underlying fear and that is the first of five principles of Reiki. Uh, Reiki is very simple, I, I, again it's very simplified so there are five principles of Reiki and number one is today I will not be angry, today I will not be angry so that anger is usually arising from fear. So fear comes first and then there is anger and anger results in pain. You know, cancer is anger at yourself or anger, hidden anger. So you solve the, you solve the anger, solve the fear and, uh, and, um, and then you, that, that's the path to, to the cure. Um, and the second principle, today I will not worry. So these are two first principles, they're negative, neg double negatives. Negate the fear, negate the anger, negate the worry. So today I will not be angry, today I will not worry. So first principles, and they are really nice principles of Reiki. So uh, you have to get into the zone. You habitually lift yourself into the Reiki. You start the Reiki and the word today was kind of make, making me question why today, why not always? And the idea is that you know you're in physical reality, you live this life, you go up and down, shift up and down. So staying in the highest possible but then you don't get lessons of the, of the, of the low level. And as a healer you do both. You you go down, grab someone down there and lift them up. Go down, grab someone there, lift them up. So you shift, that's as breathing, Reiki is as breathing, you, you shift up and down. So lifting up someone, yourself, lifting up yourself and lifting up someone else is habitual part of Reiki. You just get used to that. You come to the world, meet there whoever needs healing and then 
get that move and it is not cannot be described in words. Lots of Reiki is something which you don't do. Like I can talk for the many hours, but really it's it's something which you don't do mentally. It is something which you do in the heart or beyond the heart, in higher heart. Right? So so lift yourself up, get into the zone, stop being angry, stop worrying. And it's sometimes it's hard when the patient is negative or especially if they're in the suffering, if they if you know they are they will not make it, you know. You go to the hospital and you do Reiki to people who wouldn't make it. So stop being angry, stop stop the fear. Don't worry. Smile anyway. Like as a good doctor, as a saint, just smile anyway. You know it's not the end, right? It is just a phase. The death is just another, it's just the mirror of the birth, right? Uh, there are incarnations, and reincarnation is not part of us, Usu Reiki, but it is certainly part of galactic understanding, of metaphysical understanding. Many lifetimes, many lessons, and sometimes, um, sometimes somebody is in a hurry to exit because there is another body, body waiting for them. <laughs> Somebody has already fell in love, and uh, there is an opportunity to get um, born again. So why would you stay in that old body, right? Mm. And there are many other reasons why people exit. Sometimes you're just done here. Okay, now a bathroom break. My computer needs a new battery. Okay. 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 Grab the key if you like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.